What is up guys, Randall here from Crypto Love, and today I have an episode for you about three things I wish I knew about Bitcoin before I got started, or right when I got started, or days or weeks or months after I got started. These are three things I wish I knew in the beginning when I first started with Bitcoin that I want to share with you because I think you'll find this helpful. If you don't know this stuff already, you may already know it. I don't know. You're all pretty darn smart. But before we get started, I just want to get say, guys, thank you to everyone subscribing for daily videos about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Thank you to everyone mashing on that like button. And you guys, if you want to find out how to win a free Ledger Nano S at our late night live stream, which will happen tonight, stay tuned. Now, first thing I wish I knew about Bitcoin when I got into it is that today's price is probably the best you're ever going to see it. Okay, it is highly unlikely that the price is coming down. Now it could. All right. Those of us who just got into Bitcoin pretty recently has seen quite a downfall, which you'll see above my head right there. Okay, so it was at 20,000. Now it's down to around 10,000 fluctuating around there. And everybody's like, Oh, should I buy in? Should I sell? When's the time to get in? Well, guys, I want to show you something. So I got into Bitcoin back when it was under $2,000. And when I first got in, I was like, Oh, this is kind of like the highest it's ever been. Ah, oh, should I wait? Should I not wait? Should I wait? I'll put a little bit in. Maybe I won't put too much in. I'll put a little bit in and then I'll wait and I'll see. And that was the best prices I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Now the price may come down there. Nobody knows. With Bitcoin, don't put any money and you're not willing to lose. Okay. Again, not a financial advisor, not financial advice. Obviously, you know that stuff. But this giant run up here that we're seeing there, that this one here looked exactly the same, this one there in September. And then before that, that one there in May looked exactly the same. So it's just the most recent run up. That's the one that looks the largest, but probably the prices that you're seeing now are the best prices you may ever see in your entire life. And just showing you historically, since the beginning of time, since the dinosaurs, or since, you know, 2009 when Bitcoin came about, the price of Bitcoin has generally gone up. All right. The price keeps going up, up and up and up and up and up. It's the tens of dollars and the hundreds of dollars, then the thousands of dollars and the tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. The price just keeps going up and up and up. And if you think about this in the sense of basic economics, this makes sense. All right. Basic economics are supply and demand. So with Bitcoin, we have a fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoin actually 17 million because 4 million are lost forever. Well, with a fixed supply, that means that when the demand increases, the price increases. So the more adoption, the more people believing in Bitcoin, the more people wanting to buy and own and use Bitcoin, the higher the price will go. So given time, the price is always going to go up. So that being that, the number one thing that I wish I knew when I first got into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is that the price is always going up. Almost always. So you want to get yours now, all right? All right. Now, taking a look at the second thing, the second one that I wanted to know. So this one comes from this article. It was, let's see. I mean, it was months and months from when I got into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies until I saw this article, which changed my life. All right. When I first got into Bitcoin and cryptos, my strategy with cryptocurrencies is like, I'll just own the top 20 cryptos and hodl them and hope for the best. All right. Now, if we then I saw this article. Okay. And in this article, there's this graph here. All right. Now, if you click on the graph below thing, it'll bring you to this article, which is 118 coins plotted over time. Why hodling all coin indexes does not work. Why hodling in, uh, all coins does not work. And this is what it took me a while to learn is that the majority of cryptocurrencies, altcoins will not do better than just hodling Bitcoin. Now, why own cryptocurrencies for the long term if you're better off just hodling Bitcoin? I don't know. And this completely changed my strategy 100% in terms of what I do with Bitcoin with cryptocurrencies. So I hodl Bitcoin and maybe one or two other altcoins that I really, really like that I realize may not do as good as Bitcoin in the long term, but I just want to hodl them long term. And then the rest of the cryptocurrencies, I just trade those for gains or very small losses. Okay, always set my stop losses. But um, because of this, 
uh, I don't I don't hodl altcoins, especially not for the long term because they're not going to do well. So I'll show you. I'll show you. Taking a look at this graph. So I'll just explain this graph to you. I use this all the time when I tell you guys about it. But basically, this this is Bitcoin and altcoins in days since launch on a logarithmic scale. Now, logarithmic scale is based on tens. So we have one, ten, hundred thousand, ten thousand. It's not a linear scale. Okay, it's like an exponential scale. Um, this red line here, that's Bitcoin, always going up. Like I said, basic economics, supply and demand. The rest are these altcoins, all trending down. I don't know if you guys see that, they're all trending down. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean, Randall? I don't know. Well, what it means is that by hodling altcoins, you're just gonna be losing, okay? By hodling Bitcoin, you're gonna be winning. But if you see, there are spikes and valleys, so you can trade altcoins for gains. And how you do that is you buy them, you set a stop loss, and then if the price goes up, then you sell off parts of it from time to time, okay? So as it doubles, you sell off some, as it goes higher, you sell off some there. But if the price goes down, you just get out with your stop losses and you cut your losses to a small portion. That's how you do it. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what's this one here? What's that one? That must be Ethereum, right? No, it's not. And it was, I thought for a long time it was BitConnect, but it's not that either. It's game credits, okay? Go figure. Game credits is the one that for some reason shot up way up there. So that's that. But if you take a look at the Bitcoin comparative, it's come way down since then. So woo. again, all coins just don't do well versus Bitcoin. And then if we take a look based on the years, so like if you were hodling all coins you know, a couple years ago, you'd be doing much better off than if you were hodling all coins today. Taking a look at this, this is all coins by year hodling them. So 2010, really, there was only Bitcoin. So obviously going up. 2012, we had Litecoin and eh, not doing as well. 2013, worse. 2014, worse. 2015, worse. 2016, by far the worst year yet. So yeah, it just gets worse and worse. Don't hodl all coins. That's the second thing that I wish I knew. All right. So guys, yeah, read that article. Take a look at that. I mean, it's science and technology. We want to use that more than emotion. I know everybody wants the altcoins, wants the ICOs, all that stuff because of emotion. They want the big wins. They want to gamble, win big. And while that's possible, statistically, you're going to lose. All right. So that's number two. Number three. Number three is I wish I knew that you can dollar cost average Bitcoin. All right. Now, I've been investing in stocks and mutual funds since I've been like 18 years old. So I've been doing that for a long term, long time, long term investing. And I've been doing dollar cost averaging for a long time. And what dollar cost averaging is, is basically investing a fixed dollar amount into an investment every month or every year on a, on a fixed time period uh, and just doing that. And the coolest thing about dollar cost averaging is like Ron Papil and his daytime rotisserie oven or whatever it's called, you can just set it and forget it. So the coolest thing is that you can just set this up, you can forget it, and then automatically you're making money. Now this is just dollar cost averaging versus lump sum averaging for a year, okay? And if you take if you take a look, in a year, you end up doing better by dollar cost averaging than if you just plopped in a lump sum. Now for the first few months, you do better with the lump sum, but that's just because you have not invested as much. And generally, with dollar cost averaging, you can usually put more money in than if you do a lump sum investment, all right? But that's just for a year. Now, you got to imagine, let's think about three years, five years, 10 years in terms of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. This could be potentially huge, all right? Now, the other thing that I should mention is like when, like making YouTube videos about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, every time... Every time we see the market way up here, so at the peak there, at the peak here, at the peak there, a lot of people contact me and say, how do I buy Bitcoin now? And I say, don't buy Bitcoin now. But, but they don't want that answer. They want to buy Bitcoin now. They want to plop in a huge lump sum at the very top. And I tell them, don't do that. Just dollar cost average. And they say, I don't want a dollar cost average. I want to buy it now because I don't know if the price is going to go up. And I tell them, it's at all time highs. The price is coming down. But... Here's the thing, dollar cost averaging, the best way to get into any type of market, 
when you don't know what it's doing. And with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, we really don't know. But if you believe in the technology, if you believe in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, dollar cost averaging is the best way to get in. So I wish that I knew this when I first started because then I could have, it took a good three months or so until I really realized that I could do the dollar cost averaging uh, with Bitcoin and you can set it up, you can forget about it, and then it just runs on autopilot. You don't have to think about it. I made a whole video on it. So if you go to YouTube, search dollar cost averaging Bitcoin crypto love, you can find my video there. I walk you through how to do it on Coinbase. It takes like five, 10 minutes to set up, and then you never have to think about it again. And you're making the most money you can buying Bitcoin at the cheapest prices you possibly can. So that's the best way to do that. So those are the three things that I wish I knew. Number one, number one would be the price of Bitcoin is probably the best it's going to ever be. Number two, you're probably just better off hodling Bitcoin than hodling altcoins. And number three, you can dollar cost average Bitcoin. Those are the three things that I wish I knew when I got started. I hope that for those of you who are getting into it now, who got into it a few months ago, those things will help you as well. And then lastly, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for watching the episodes. Thanks for hanging around. Guys, if you want to win that free Ledger Nano S, go to crypto-love.com slash ledger. You can enter to win. We're at our late night live stream tonight, Tuesday night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We will be giving away a Ledger Nano S in addition to talking about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, whatever you guys want to talk about. So I'll see you guys there. I'll catch you in that one. Have a good one. Very good to talk to you. All right. Peace.